While attending the South Mississippi Light Aircraft Fly-In, I came across this Quicksilver Sport 2, flown by Ariel Smith. I don't know much about the Quicksilver, so I asked Ariel for an interview. All right, so I'm out here at uh, South Mississippi Light Aircraft, which is in Loosedale, Mississippi, and one of the family members here. Hello, I'm Ariel. Ariel also flies, and she flies the Quicksilver, so I haven't covered much of uh, that end of the uh, spectrum here, so we're gonna walk around her airplane, the family's airplane here in Talk Shop. Out here on Ronnie and Moore Smith's farm, they enjoy a smooth 3,000 foot runway, a beautiful backdrop of southern Mississippi, and a fully capable engine shop that services primarily Rotax. Of course, Ronnie and Morris have made a few friends over the years, and between those and their customers, their fly-ins are well attended. So it's no surprise that many of the aircraft that flew in today are in fact powered by Rotax. Some four-stroke and a few two-stroke. The Quicksilver we are talking about today is a Rotax two-stroke, model 582 Bluehead, and is a popular engine in many ultralight and ultralight training aircraft. I don't know how much you know about airplanes, but I'll be controlling the airplane with uh, the stick and then these feet pedals here. But you can keep your feet on these pedals, but as we're flying, I'll be moving them back and forth. And you'll just kind of like keep your feet loose so they're not going to move. All right, so let's start off by, how did you get started in aviation? So we grew up in a flying family. My great grandpa started flying and then my grandpa and then my father. And when we were little, we were always around airplanes. But when you get the time to go back and then kind of get in something like this and fly, you really, you really rekindle that joy that you're like, hey, this is why I got into this. This is, this is what you love about general aviation and uh, light sport aircraft, so. All right, so one of the biggest things that this is a, experimental because it's a two-seater yeah. but it's a ultralight trainer so and most of these are flying two-stroke what's your experience with the two-stroke so far versus a conventional well so the only experience I have with two-stroke is specifically this Quicksilver here and uh, the main thing I think we notice is we keep the RPMs a little higher and uh, Conventional to a four-stroke, you're really always keeping an eye on where you are places to land, which you should do that with every aircraft. But I know particularly with this one, you're getting ready as far as, okay, if you, if you had to put it down, if the engine just started to get a little silly, where are you going to go? Um, but in general, I think that's the, the biggest difference I've noticed. I've never honestly had any trouble with two-strokes. I've heard good and bad things about them, but from my personal experience, nothing, nothing bad compared to four-strokes. All right, again, so I'm new to the Quicksilver uh, aircraft um, platform. How do you go about doing a pre-flight? So your pre-flight's gonna be similar to a lot of aircraft. You'll have your basic things you're looking for. And then every particular plane, just in general, even with Quicksilver, is gonna have slightly differences. For me, I like to start in uh, first checking our fuel, make sure we have enough. So we have in here where we can see where our fuel level is. And right now we're up at about, I think like six or seven gallons is where you can see the the fuel when you shake the plane is right up here, so it's probably what, seven gallons. Um, and general, if it's been sitting a while, we'll want to sump our tanks right here. If we push this down, uh, the fuel sump is, it releases the fuel down there, which you can see it kind of coming out a little bit. So that's how we'll sump the tanks and make sure that's all good. The same thing you do with general aviation aircrafts. We'll kind of look and make sure everything is looking normal. Uh, right up here, we have our oil. So if you can, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but you can see our oil level is right about here. So we're making sure that's full and clean. Our prop and blades, everything is clear of nicks, just like we do with uh, most aircraft. Then from that point, I'll start working kind of around this way. So checking to make sure our tires are inflated. We don't have any bald spots or anything like that. And the biggest thing with Quicksilvers that I think you notice is you have all these cables. And so you're checking all the cables and making sure all right, all your screws are secure, all your pins are in, and kind of visually and physically touching those and making sure everything looks good. So we'll start from here is where I normally do that, kind of looking, checking the pins, making sure everything looks well and secured. 
Uh, another thing is you want to make sure the seats, the pins on the seats are securely fastened as well. So, okay, we're checking these screws, making sure everything looks like it's tight because you're not in an airplane, you're kind of on the frame sitting. So you want to make sure all everything is super, super secure. Uh, pins here that control the stick. Okay, that's secured in. Here's some more cables and more pins to check. And so, you know, it's just the same similar idea walk around, but you're just kind of, you're making sure everything feels secure and feels well. So we'll come on this side, checking this up here. We're also going to look, as you can see, where all the cables come together at the top. Can't feel them, but visually you're going to check and make sure you can see the pins. And as we come around, we'll see, look at that from the back end as well. Uh, anything out of the ordinary, you know, once you do your checklist, you'll kind of visually see what everything looks like. So if you see anything out of the ordinary, you want to catch that. Another thing we do as well that's different compared to uh, like a 172, we're going to unzip here. And if you look inside, uh, you'll see these cables. And the main thing is, is you don't want these to be twisted or crossed in any way. Not this cross is different because this is a structural cable. But right here, these two, you don't want them to be twisted in any way because that controls the airplane. Alrighty, and then the same general thing, you know, walking around making sure the surface area looks good and clear, nothing out of the ordinary, no rips or tears. Coming back here, same thing, checking bolts, checking secures. We'll check this tire for inflation, bald spots. Going around, we'll come around to the tail here. Looking under kind of visually feeling and mentally checking everything and then you know you'll use a checklist if we have it right now we're not but all right check under here make sure all these bolts are secured and everything looks pretty good and that's kind of the general idea of a, a walk around checklist a pre-flight with this aircraft we are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com Foxtrot 95 Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. All right, so now we've pre flyed it, this thing's ready to fly. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a high drag, high lift aircraft, but what do you fly it at? Like, what are the speeds that you're taking off, landing, maneuvering? The speeds are slow, which I personally love that. So we're going up and we're cruising at about 55, 45, you know, depending on what RPM setting you have uh, picked. Normally, I'm probably around, I think, 50 is when I'm just kind of cruising around. And then when I come into land, I'd say, for me, I mean, you can fly it differently, but for me personally, I think I'm like 45 for base. And uh, I fly it all the way to the ground for final, and I think it flares somewhere around like 30. And so it flares really slow, but the biggest thing is, is um, when you pull that power, it's coming down. So you want to make sure, you know, you're right on the ground and you're watching it. So I always come in with a little bit of power to make sure my flare is just kind of really nice and smooth with that. But it's slow, but it's I enjoy the slow. So not like a, maybe if you're going from A to B fast, you don't want to fly this around. But if you're cruising around, you know, your little home airport or you want to see the sights, I definitely recommend. Hi, right, Ariel. So one of the things I noticed, it's sitting on its tail. Yes. So I assume there's some unique ways of getting in and out of this thing. The main thing is, is when you sit down, it, the, the nose starts to come down. So typically I kind of like to just gently do it if I can get it to go. Sometimes I have to push it depending on your weight to get that setting. And then once you're in the plane, it'll stay down, but you want to kind of make sure that is set in. Or if you're loading passengers, a lot of times I'll push the nose down while they're getting in so they're not worried about it moving when they're getting in. Um, another thing is the seatbelts are back here and you have the, the strap so you want to make sure everything's loose and especially when you're loading people up to get them all secured before you get in because as you can see it's all open cockpit so things are flapping so you want to make sure things are secure as possible and um, also you're secure you don't have anything in your pockets that are going to fly out into the prop back here um, so we'll buckle up I don't know if you want me to go ahead and buckle up for you it's okay all right so let's roll it this is 
Uh, Quicksilver makes an ultralight, yes. which is single seat, and this is two seats, so it is no longer ultralight. So this is classified as an experimental now, correct? Yes, correct. Now, for you to get this, you actually need to have a pilot's license and some training. So how do you go about that, and what do you need as a minimum to be able to fly this aircraft? Alrighty, so to fly one of these, you actually you don't have to have your complete private. You can actually just have a sports pilot's license, which requires a less hours for you. So that's nice that you can hop into one of these bad boys um, sooner than you could for like a general aviation, like a 172, which is really nice. Now you are, are in the process of becoming a flight instructor for yes. general aviation, right? Yes. So how far away are you from that, and what's that uh, experience been like? Um, I am. I have my check ride in, I think, like a week, a little less than a week. It has. It's a lot of learning, especially when you're getting your CFI, because you have. There's. You learn everything, but you don't know everything. And then as you're going in aviation, you continue to learn. And there's just. There's so much to immerse yourself in. And even I have people that have their CFIs that they're telling me, you're not going to know everything. You're constantly learning. You're. You're never going to um, have a complete grasp because it's always immersing yourself in everything, talking to different. Experiences experienced pilots and just constantly picking up little things you can to enhance your flying ability and your your knowledge so that's what I think that's the biggest thing I got from it is you're never gonna know everything you just got to keep learning but I'm super excited about that and super excited for the learning process so, yeah. okay and for those of you that are really interested in flying this aircraft or building or buying one here's some general specifications the length comes in at 18 feet 3 inches the height is 8 feet and a half inch. Wingspan is 30 feet, 11 inches. The wing area is 174 square feet with a wing loading of 5.74 pounds per square foot. Seats, two. A minimal flight crew of one. Well, I guess they don't want this thing flying itself. The empty weight comes in at 430 pounds. Useful load is a whopping 570 pounds, which is quite amazing for this size aircraft. Payload with fuel, 534 pounds. Max takeoff weight is right at 1,000 pounds with a fuel capacity of 6 U.S. gallons. Now let's talk performance. The takeoff distance ground roll is 240 feet. Takeoff distance to clear a 50 foot obstacle is right around 660 feet. With a rate of climb of 500 feet per minute, max level speed at sea level is 69 miles per hour. Landing distance over a 50 foot obstacle with braking is 484 feet. Landing distance ground roll with braking is 220 feet. This has a glide ratio of a potato at 5.5 to one. Minimum sink rate 600 feet per minute. Your cruise performance at 55% power is 55 miles an hour. 65% is 58, 75% and 61, and 100% power screaming wide open here at 69 miles per hour. All right, so about here in uh, Lucidale, Mississippi, um, here's the man, or one of the men here at a fly-in. Uh, Morris, what's going on this weekend? Well, today, we well, yes, started yesterday, and today we have our annual fly-in, which is in October. It's the fourth weekend in October of every year, and we invite all our friends and customers out to just have a day with us, to spend with us. We, we tell the local folks that don't know anything about aviation, it's a car show for airplanes, and we invite everybody out just to see what, what local stuff we do. We offer some uh, rides in the aircraft for those that haven't ever got to actually fly in an airplane, so we try to accommodate those people too, and we just try to enjoy aviation and have a, have a good time. Yeah, since this started this morning, there's been props spinning, planes arriving, planes taking off, rides. You got two aircraft that are giving rides to kids. Uh, it's a happening show. Is this something you're planning on doing every year now and building up, or every year? We've been doing this since 1988. Well, where have I been? This is my first year being here. I don't know where you've been, man. <laughs> We've been doing this since 1988, right here at our facility. We used to back in the day have a club that we had all kind of ultralight aircraft here. We had games we did with the aircraft we uh, were trying to you know build that back up some not necessarily do the games and stuff but just trying to get back get the locals and others back into aviation uh, as we always have and as South Mississippi Light Aircraft we are a Rotex service center master repair center for Rotex it's a chance for all our customers and people we do service for to come come over for a day and hang out and meet each other and talk and we just talk aviation we're just plain people man yeah, it's a, it's a great, beautiful spot here in the country in Loosedale. They got a, is it a 3,000 foot? 3,000 foot grass strip, uh, runways 13 and 31. And your Unicom here is? 1229, which is not on four flight or sectionals. We don't know how it got deleted. 
Gotcha, so. gotcha. Well, it's a beautiful place, and we had a lot of fun. We actually camped out with the family under one of the oak trees on the hills here. Um, beautiful spot. So. Just checking in with here, uh, Morris and uh, Ronnie. Of course, they run the show here at South Mississippi Light Aircraft. Um, where can they find you online? Well, Ed, I'm, I have my own Facebook page, and we're working on updating our website at flysmla.com. Perfect. Well, we'll see you next year. Always a good time hanging with the Smith family at their farm in Mississippi. If you have an interest in aviation and are searching for a flight instructor, well, guess what? Ariel Smith is scheduled to become a CFI this month. So reach out to Ronnie or Morris on their website to see how you can start flight training soon. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.